Okay, in this question we've got two 16 microcoulomb positive charges. Both are missing electrons, that's why they're positive. They're separated by a certain distance which is not given. But at a location immediately to the right of the bottom 16 microcoulomb charge and straight below the top 16 microcoulomb charge is the point P. Now keep in mind that that's not another charge, that's just a location in space. And what we're trying to figure out is what is the net electric field at that location in space. To do this question, we want to determine the electric field due to Q1 only at a point P, and then do the same thing for Q2. Imagine Q1 vanishes, and what is the electric field due to Q2? And once we know those two electric fields at point P, we can do a tip-to-tail vector diagram and determine our net electric field, since electric field is a vector. But as I mentioned before, it's often easier to envision this problem if we first draw our field lines between these two charges. Now we've got two like charges here. They're both positive and they're both 16 microcoulombs. So I'm going to pull out a diagram that you've seen on your tutorial that shows the electric field lines surrounding two like charges. So this is the diagram as found in your tutorials. The two blue dots are both positive charges, similar to our two 16 microcoulomb positive charges. The only difference is in the diagram above, the 16 microcoulomb charges are arranged at an angle. So if you can imagine tilting this diagram so that the blues are at an angle, you'd get a pretty good picture as to what the field lines look like surrounding those two charges. Now at location P, that's equivalent to roughly where my hand is down below here if I tilted the diagram. So if you look at our field lines, it looks like they should be pointed straight down at location P, which is roughly in the middle of those two charges. We're trying to determine what is the magnitude of that electric field right where my hand is. What is its overall value? So we're going to label our vectors. Our vector for the electric field from Q1 will be in red, and our vector from the, for the electric field from Q2 will be in blue. And we'll sketch those now and explain. So since our field lines always point away from positive, and both these charges are positive, if I look at Q1 alone, so imagine Q2 doesn't exist, at location P, my field line will be directly away from Q1 along this red arrow. And I'm going to label that E1 to represent the electric field from Q1. Similarly for Q2, if I ignore Q1, E2 will be directly away from Q2. So if I want to find the net electric field for any two vectors like I've drawn here, I need to arrange them tip to tail and determine the overall value. So E1 tip to tail plus E2 should give me a net electric field pointed from where we started the diagram towards where we ended. So we see that my net electric field will be down towards the right at roughly a 45 degree angle. We'll calculate that in a second. Now, in the top diagram, if I put my net electric field in there, it should make sense. If I have two arrows pulling, as we've seen in this diagram above, my net electric field should be somewhere down the middle. So let's put that in and just see how it looks. So my net electric field will be down at an angle as represented by this lighter gray arrow. So this gray arrow is the same as this black one. I'm just showing you what it looks like on the diagram. Now on our diagram down below, our original field line diagram, it would be straight down our gray arrow as follows. So our net electric field at that location as predicted by our diagram should be straight down. And you can imagine if I tilt this at an angle, I'd get the same shape as I got up top. The gray arrow would be pointed down towards the right. So let's move things around and actually solve it now. So I'll slide it back up. There's our original question. And let's solve for our net electric field. Now to do that, because E1 and E2 are at right angles to each other, it's going to become a question of Pythagoras. So if we can figure out what E1 is and E2 is separately, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out our hypotenuse. So as before, here are our choices for our electric field equations. Our general equation, which is our definition, electric field is force per unit charge. And we don't know what the force is at that location, so this might not be of any use to us. And then our equation that's specific for point charges. And remember, that's what we're dealing with here. 16 microcoulomb Q1 is a point charge, as is Q2.
So this is the equation we want to focus, where Q is the charge that's creating the electric field, and R is the distance from the charge, the location of the electric field. So since E1 and E2 share the same data, they both have the same distance, they both have the same charge, you should get the same answer, which is what we see in front of us. K is Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1 and Q2, doesn't matter which side, are both 16 microcoulombs, so 16 times 10 to the negative 6. And the distance is 0.5, so we go 0.5 squared on the bottom. And E1 and E2 both end up becoming 5.76 times 10 to the 5th newtons per coulomb. So using the Pythagorean theorem, E1 squared plus E2 squared square rooted gives me 8.2 times 10 to the 5th newtons per coulomb for the magnitude of E net. And if I want to determine this little angle that I've labeled theta, I can just go opposite over adjacent, which is tan theta. And of course, when you're solving for the angle, you've got to go inverse tan. So my angle will be a tan inverse of opposite over adjacent is, as expected, 45 degrees. So my net electric field is 8.2 times 10 to the 5th newtons per coulomb at an angle of 45 degrees south of east.